Hello everyone! In this series of videos, we will be looking at the origins of certain monsters, the different variations they've received over the years, and how their movesets and attacks have evolved throughout each game. Remember to like and subscribe for more. Kushala Deora is the flagship monster of Monster Hunter 2. He is an elder dragon with a metallic appearance and the ability to control the winds. In combat, Kushala can utilise this ability by surrounding himself with a wind barrier that pushes hunters away from his sides and deflects gunner bullets. He is capable of blasting wind from his mouth too, which makes him incredibly dangerous at both long and close range. Speaking of close range, Kushala has several physical attacks too. He can charge at the hunter and swing his claws around. His giant wings allow him to stay airborne and attack from there too. He can glide at the hunter, slam his claws down and shoot wind blasts, both singular and continuous. While Kushala is incredibly powerful, he has some glaring weaknesses. Flash bombs can easily bring him down from the sky and if you poison him, his wind barrier will be heavily reduced. I touched on this in the Camellios video, but Camellios weapons and armour are the perfect counter to Kashala Deora, while he himself is the perfect counter to Teostra. The same way breaking Camellios' horn inhibits his invisibility, breaking Kashala's horns will stop his wind barrier. Because his scales are metal, they rust over time and eventually peel off, revealing a new hide beneath them. But until that happens, Kashala is extra vulnerable and thus becomes much more aggressive. Meet the rusted Kushala Deora. This Kushala variant sports a reddish brown appearance and tends to chain attacks together much more frequently than his standard counterpart. Both Kushala and his variant went on to skip the third generation of Monster Hunter entirely, but he alone made his grand return in Monster Hunter 4. Aside from his attack animations being faster and overall smoother, he gains the ability to summon giant tornadoes that persist for a period of time. In G-Rank, he can also summon mini tornadoes that zip and zoom around the area, serving as persistent hazards. A change Kushala received in the fourth generation is the ability to summon Dragon Wind when enraged. Dragon Wind is black and will bypass any wind resistant skills hunters have equipped. However, breaking Kushala's horn or tail or poisoning him will prevent him from using it, only allowing him to use the regular wind. Rusted Kushala Deora returned for the expansion. In this game, he actually plays a major role in the story, serving as the main threat and final boss of the village quests. He is briefly fought and repelled in high rank and battled for real in G rank. He has similar attacks to Kushala, but he is much faster when using physical attacks and when repositioning. He can chain bites together and has a much tougher hide. Kushala is also in Generations, where he is identical to his Monster Hunter 4 version. Rusted Kushala was absent from this game and every entry onwards. As of this video, 4 Ultima is his last appearance. Kushala Deoro later made a return for World, looking lovely in HD with several new readjustments. He is no longer weak to poison. To suppress his wind powers, you must use Elder Seal, a new property weapons can have. He can create huge tornadoes like in Monster Hunter 4, but in Wild and Iceborne, he can summon multiple, which heavily restricts the hunter's movements. They can either move around or stay in one place. One of his new ways of summoning them has him spread his wings and create one beneath him as he takes off into the air. In Iceborne, if these tornadoes collide, they can temporarily create an even larger one. As well as his old bite attacks, he can now fire short wind bursts directly in front of him and perform extended bite combos similar to Rusted Kushala. In the air, Kushala can sometimes perform aerial kicks. As part of an update, Kushala gains an arch tempered form. This Kushala is shinier and will perform his aerial kicks much more frequently. He is also heavily resistant to flash bombs, which is something carried over to Master Rank Kushala. This means that both of Kushala's traditional weaknesses have been nerfed in this game in some fashion. World Kushala tends to stay in the air for longer periods of time, and combined with this tornado serving as constant hazards, it can make him a tricky opponent. 
It does not help that from this game onwards, you cannot suppress his wind powers by breaking his horns. However, in this game only, he is one of the first and few Elder Dragons who can become exhausted. When this happens, his wind barrier becomes inactive for a period of time, he won't fly for nearly as long, and will mostly use grounded attacks until he becomes enraged again. Kushala Deyoro returned to Monster Hunter Rise in the very first title update. He has several new additions and changes. One of which is that he is now weak to poison again, and with Camellios in the game, the rock paper scissors dynamic is back. His wind barrier is no longer nearly as persistent, now procking every couple of seconds rather than all the time. His tornadoes too no longer persist for nearly as long as they did in Wild, but they tend to travel much further and faster, and he often summons multiple of them at once. When creating a large tornado beneath him, Kushala will attempt to suck you in before unleashing it. He has a new combo where he fires a wind blast that knocks you into the sky and then follows it up with another aimed blast, forcing you to wirefall in order to dodge it. Kushala in general seems to not only combo attacks together pretty fast, but unlike World Kushala, tends to spend lots of time on the ground. Many of his aerial attacks will now have him land, where he combos into ground attacks. Sometimes he performs ground attacks that combo into aerial attacks too, like this one here, where he slams his claws down, unleashing Dragon Blight on the player. This is a good opportunity to talk about Kushala and his elemental powers. In the older games, his physical attacks would be Dragon Element based. This was not immediately obvious, because Elemental Blights did not exist in those games. However, rather than Dragon, Kushala's weapons dealt ice damage instead. This is because in snowy regions he could deal ice damage, but not anywhere else curiously. This also extends to 4 Ultimate, where he could only use ice in the frozen seaway. In this game, he couldn't use Dragon Element at all. In Monster Hunter World, he cannot appear in the Horse Frost Reach, and so he cannot use Ice Element in this game at all. In Monster Hunter Rise, he can inflict it in the Frost Islands, but not the Sandy Plains, and gains the ability to use Dragon Element with this one attack. This gives Kushala a way to counter players with poison weapons by stopping them using status attacks and thus suppressing his wind barrier. I believe the Rise iteration of Kushala is the best version yet, restoring his poison weakness, making his wind barrier less of an issue, but turning up his aggression to compensate makes him a lot of fun. The world iteration visually was stunning, but could often be very unfun to fight, especially as all conventional means of countering him were nerfed or heavily altered. I actually made a video on this a long time ago. The video is unvoiced, but I still recommend checking it out. The 4 Ultimate version was fine, but only if you wore Camellios gear and had a good poison weapon. Preparation was key for Kushala in order to mitigate as many annoying factors as possible, but I suppose that is something the Rise version lacks. Reducing the potency of his wind barrier made him less of a pain, which arguably makes him more fun, but it also means you don't really have to prepare against him. Perhaps Sunbreak will make it more of a threat. Which Kushala is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and check out my other videos too.